Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me again, Kuya Ryan, also known as Kuya Kikas Facebook. Uh, sa mga bago po sa ating channel, welcome po sa inyong lahat. Nabanggit ko nga po kanina na meron po tayong Facebook group. It's www.facebook.com slash TV. Lalagay ko po yung link sa my description down below. May clean introduction lang guys. Uh, sana po wag niyo po itong skip uh, Meron po tayong Facebook group. Tulad nga po na nasabi ko kanina, I receive tons of messages every day, Mga 10 to 20 messages. And then meron po tayong... Marami nagko-comments ating uh, YouTube uh, videos in the in every day po yan no and I try as much as I could na makapag-comment back or makapag-reply sa ating uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, so pagpasensya niyo na po kung hindi po ako makapag-reply sa bawat messages niyo in time nga po eh may ikling introduction na po na gusto ko pong isingit para po sa mga bago po sa ating uh, Facebook group na I think we reach almost uh, Kalahati na po tayo ng 750 uh, followers and likes sa may ating Facebook group. And then, 4, sorry, 7,400 na sa ating YouTube. So, congratulations to us. Hindi man malaki yung ating subs. And, pero happy pa rin tayo kasi may nanonood po ng ating, ating mga video. So, for today's video guys, um, interview questions noong nag-apply ako bilang isang uh, LPN and RN dito sa Canada. So, disclaimer lang no guys, gusto ko lang sana sabihin sa inyo na eto mga interview questions na to, it can differ from facility to facility, it can differ sa anong inapplyan mo. So, ako, ang inapplyan ko dito is yung LPN at RN. So, since LPN yung RN inapplyan ko, mixed medical and behavioral questions yung mga tinanong nila sa akin. Nung nag-apply ako, nagsimula kasi ako dito as caregiver, tapos naging nursing attendant. Nung nag-nursing attendant ako, nung nag-apply ako sa facility at saka sa government facility. Ang tinanong nila sa akin, mostly 99.9% is behavioral questions. And then the rest is yung mga personal history ko na. So, para sa may mga questions kung paano mag-apply kasi nasa government ako, itry mo muna sa mga private uh, assisted living, uh, sa mga seniors home. Dun, dun kasi ako nagsimula eh. Uh, tapos, Kumuha ako ng one-year experience doon and then nakapasok na ako sa my government hospital. Doon ako nag-start as a healthcare aide hanggang sa naging LPN as, tapos naging isang registered nurse. As ngayon, a registered emergency nurse. So ayun ang ginawa kong foot, ay, parang naging ladder ko, naging footsteps ko. Parang eklabo, di ba? Pataas ng pataas. So kung gusto nyo, ayun yung gawin yung steps. Yung iba kasi, ang ginagawa, gusto nila agad makapasok sa government hospital. Pero... Doable naman yun kung meron kang kakilala or kung talagang gustong gusto mo mag-apply ka talaga everyday sa AHS which is the uh, talagang highest level na ng parang government na institution dito sa may Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Sa may Alberta mismo as a whole. So, meron kami external link sa may Alberta Health Services. Alam ko marami nanonood dito sa ating YouTube channel na taga Alberta. Marami kasi nagme-message sa akin na nagpapa papa pasok sa Alberta Health Services pero hindi po ako <laughs> hindi po ako taga recruitment services hindi po ako taga HR guys so ang advice ko sa inyo guys mag-apply kayo online every day sa may external website and then pag natapos na tong problema ng ating bansa problema ng ating mundo pumunta kayo sa unit na inapplyan niyo and then all, always uh, submit niyo pa rin yung inyong resume uh, sa may unit clerk for nurses so siya ang haba ng introduction for nurses dalawa yung Dalawa yung parts niya. Ang um, questions is medical and then questions part 1 is medical and part 2 is behavioral. Ang um, part 1, sasabihin ko sa inyo is medical. Ito yung mga tinanong sa akin before na naalala ko. And then part 2 is behavioral. Hindi ko na sabihin yung mga sagot kasi kayo na bahala doon. Yung part 1 na medical dito, sasabihin ko sa inyo yung mga sagot ko, hindi ko sinasabing ayun yung tamang sagot. Sinasabi ko lang sa inyo, ayun yung mga sinagot ko. You can do your own research guys. Pero Ito yung mga sinagot ko, na-hire naman ako, so hindi ko alam kung anong tama. So, kayo na bahala, kayo na bahala mag... It's up at your discretion kung gusto nyo gamitin yung sagot ko, or uh, you can comment down below kung tama yung sagot. So, ang unang-unang medical question na tinanong sa akin, na hindi hindi ko makakalimutan, anong gagawin mo kapag ang potassium ng pasyen pasyente is 6.0? So, hindi ko na-elaborate masyado yung sagot ko kasi hahaba itong uh, vlog na ito. So, syempre, nursing assessment. Ano bang itsura ng pasyente? Stable ba siya o hindi? Kung meron kayong cardiac monitor sa bedside, make sure you attach the patient to a cardiac monitor para makatch mo kung meron man arrhythmia yung pasyente. Baka mamaya nag-RVR na yung pasyente or nag-AFib na siya or nag third degree heart block na siya. O baka prolonged na yung ST niya or baka mamaya elevated, elevated na yung ST niya, di ba? 
So, y- yung y- prolong yung QT complexes niya. In what I mean. So, call the lab. Ano bang ginawa nilang uh, pagkuha ng dugo? Is it very puncture or finger poke? Finger poke. So, malaking difference kapag finger poke or very puncture. So, kapag sinabi nilang very, very puncture yung ginawa nilang pag-draw ng blood and then 6.0 talaga yung resulta, why not call the doctor? Maybe we should do a DVG, a venous blood gas. Madali ang resulta ng venous blood gas. So, pag nag- make sure kapag gumawa kayo ng venous blood gas, Kasi sa emergency kami gumagawa ng venous blood gas. So kapag gumawa ka ng venous blood gas, walang tourniquet. Kung hindi, magiging, mag-a-alter talaga yung results ng inyong uh, ng venous blood gas, ng blood gas nyo. So walang tourniquet, isa nyo agad sa lab, call the lab na nasanin nyo yung uh, venous blood gas para ma-process nila agad. And within 5-10 minutes, makukuha nyo na agad yung resulta. Nandudun yung potassium. And then you could compare kung tama ba yung manipuncture versus venous blood gas na results. And kapag mal- malaki yung difference, Maybe you should ask the doctor, maybe we should do a, a, another repeat lights. And then, you do your nursing assessment or you do your nursing intervention. So, ano bang nursing interventions? Kapag mataas talaga yung potassium, and then, hindi siya kaya ng resonium or in lactulose, uh, maybe we should do a uh, dextrose and insulin. So, hindi ko alam kung uh, karamihan sa inyo is familiar about dextrose and insulin to reverse the uh, potassium sa my cell. Sa, sa, uh, sa may cellular form eklabu ng pasyente. Pero anyway, ayun yung idea about the potassium. So hopefully naintindihan nyo guys. Hindi ko na masyadong elaborate kasi masyado nang hahaba talaga. Ang pangalawang question na naalala ko is anong gagawin mo kapag yung oxygen saturation ng pasyente mo is nagdidesat? So first is nursing assessment. So i-check mo agad yung itsura ng room. I-check mo agad yung itsura ng pasyente. Ano ba itsura ng pasyente? Pale ba siya? Blue? Ano ba? Nag-struggle ba siya sa oxygen, uh, may shortness of breath ba, unlabored ba yung breathing niya, uh, may sign of symptoms of distress ba talaga, respiratory distress, easy and regular ba, talagang nag, nag-struggle ba talaga siya mag-breathe. So, baka mama yung waveform naman ng oxygen saturation is hindi maganda. So, always do your proper assessment. So, lagi ko sinasabi, oxygenation, do your oxygenation assessment and do your ventilation assessment. Iba yung oxygenation guys, tiba. Alam niyo naman yan, di ko na masyadong elaborate. Oxygenation is the uh, exchange of O2 eklabu sa my airways. Iba din yung ventilation which is the inspiration expiration. So iba yung assessment mo doon sa dalawa. So pagkatapos doon, check mo yung pasyente, ano ba itsura niya, diba? Baka naman mamaya naka-slouch lang yung pasyente. Try mo yung high fallers yung pasyente, baka mamaya it solves the problem. Uh, big big lang tumaas na yung oxygen saturation ng pasyente, di ba? Hindi mo na kailangan ng medical intervention. Uh, pag hindi pa rin na-resolve yung uh, tawag dito, yung medical, uh, yung nursing intervention na yun, go for medical intervention. Or maybe, sorry, before jumping to the medical intervention, we should go back to um, assessment. So assessment pala includes yung auscultation ng lungs, uh, tapong dito kung wizi ba siya yung mga ganong levels nakalimutan ko sabihin yung sa nursing intervention ah uh, sa so nursing assessment tama yeah so sa so nursing interventions so sabi ko nga prop the head of the bed uh, PRN medications so we'll jump to the PRN medications baka may in order yung doctor na nebulizers or inhalers na pwede natin ibigay sa pasyente para mag maging mas okay yung kanyang uh, oxygen saturation levels Pero you have to consider din na pagbibigay ng oxygen delivery yung mga kanula, baka mamaya COPD siya and then CO2 retainer siya. So you have to weigh the pros and cons din sa pagbibigay ng oxygen sa pasyente na may, may COPD. Tapos, uh, CO2 retainer siya. Um, tapos yun, so inform the doctor, baka mamaya gusto nilang gawin ng x-ray, baka mamaya yung pneumonia na siya, or baka mamaya pleur effusion na siya. So ayun, so I hope you guys get the idea ng oxygen saturation na nag Ayun yung sinagot ko noong time na yun. Pangatlong medical questions na alala ko, pangatlong medical question na alala ko is yung the doctor ordered Lasix. And then yung blood pressure ng pasyente is mababa na. 90 over 50. Ibibigay ko ba daw yung Lasix or hindi? So, ang sinabi ko doon is nursing assessment again. Past medical, past medical history ng pasyente, kung heart failure ba talaga siya, ano bang previous blood pressure niya? Uh, ano bang kalagayan ng pasyente ngayon? Yung heart assessment niya, check mo lungs, check mo heart, kung fine crackles ba siya, or, uh, as in lahat ng nursing assessment na pwede mong gawin sa pasyente when it comes to like lungs, heart, kasi ang sinasabi natin dito is heart failure eh. And then the doctor is ordering Lasix. 
Kasi ang ang naranasan ko when I was in cardiac unit before, uh, turo, turo, turo to ito ng actually doctor before the interview na huwag kang matakot magbigay ng Lasix kasi mababa yung blood pressure ng pasyente. In fact, ibigay mo yung Lasix kasi mag-expand yung, mag yung heart kasi mag itatanggalin niya yung fluid sa lungs. Gets? So magiging mas okay yung pag-expand ng heart and tataas yung blood pressure, mas maganda yung mas gaganda yung blood pressure ng pasyente. Ang iba kasi ang worry kapag nagbigyan ng Lasix, mas bababa yung blood pressure ng pasyente. Anyway, ayun yung idea nung sagot ko sa tatanong about Lasix. So number four is yung pagiging hub leader. Ito mix mix na medical and uh, behavioral questions. So as a hub lead, as a registered nurse, meron kang team members. Isang LPN and isang RN. Meron kang eight na pasyente sa inpatient ward. So usually for apat na stable, apat na unstable, uh, apat na unstable sa iyo yan, yung mga packed blood cells o yung mga chest tube, apat na stable sa LPN. Uh, and then you work together. Pero ang binagay sa akin na question is, limang unstable na pasyente, tatlong stable na pasyente. Paano mo hahatiin yun? And then, meron kayo isang healthcare aid. <clears throat> I think, the bottom line, sabi ko sa, sa interview, the bottom line is proper communication along, among the team members, teamwork, and then, uh, di, 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 divide the assignment properly and designate the assignment accordingly. Kasi, you should know the limitations of the LPN and kailangan na doon ka parate kapag kailangan ng help ng team members mo. Ayun yung sagot ko sa hablit. Number five, <clears throat> the patient arrived in emergency na may fever 38.9. Anong gagawin mo? So, ang sabi ko, pull out your protocol, do your assessment. So, when I said do your assessment, pull out, pull out your protocol. Ang ibig sabihin nun, gumawa ka ng dugo, ng cultures uh, kapag yung pasyente is like tend to be seen by the uh, by the ED physician you could bump him or her up to like one or second kung kumbaga next to be seen right away kasi nga nangangalib na yung pasyente di ba I mean, I mean you're worried about his or her health so pwede mo siyang i-bump na unang to be seen uh, kumuha ka ng VBG and then if the doctor, uh, I mean, most likely the doctor will order an IV antibiotics and then acetaminophen right away. So that this patient will be seen right away. So you just need to know your protocols and blood cultures, IV antibiotics. I think the, the answer that the manager wants you to hear from this uh, question is, ano yung gagawin mo? Ano yung step by step? Ano yung protocol mo kapag may lagnat yung pasyente? Yun. Number six is yung ECG. Um, ako ay myself, guys. Takot na takot talaga ako sa ECG. Takot na takot talaga ako kapag nakakita ako ng heart rhythm dati. Uh, I think, uh, uh, correct, uh, I should correct myself. Up until now. Dahil marami pa rin ako nami-miss. Um, alam mo yun, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Miss, um, May, alam mo yun, na may, may, may namimiss ka mga rhythm na dapat pala, uy, ST elevation siya, uy, cute, prolonged cute siya, bakit ako nabigyan ng gantong gamot? But that, it's, that's okay, that's how you learn, guys. Uh, sa mga nurses na nanonood ngayon, na nag-worry, kuya, hirap akong mag ng ECG, uh, there's a bunch of online courses na free, and uh, sa YouTube, ang dami-dami kang mapapanood na uh, ECG 101 kung paano mag-read ng ECG. Try that, guys. Uh, ako, doon lang ako natuto and then meron akong book dito na binigay ng educator namin, educator namin before na talagang inaalo ko every year. Talagang, tinatry ko talagang i-refresh yung utak ko about ECG every year. At para at least, di ba, hindi mawala yung hindi mawala yung napag-aralan ko before. But anyway, so, four patients came, cardiac, uh, one and STEMI, one third degree, one first degree, one is a fib. Sino unang una mong i ipa prioritize? Of course, the end stemi. End stemi is heart attack already, guys. So expect 
anticoags right away, beta blockers right away, uh, nitrates right away, di ba? Paka a cardiac monitor right away. Pangalawa yung third, de third degree heart, third, third degree heart block. Pwede siya mag ventricular stand still. Put the patient on cardiac monitor right away. Very unstable patients yung first and second. Yung third na papariorityize mo yung AFib. Kung hindi naman siya nag-RVR, kung hindi naman ang heart rate niya is above 100, okay lang siya guys. They could manage, pero pag nag-RVR na yan, fluids, heart rate control, di ba? Cardiac monitor right away. Fourth, you can do the syringe method too para bumaba yung heart rate niya. Fourth is yung first degree. First degree, there's nothing to be concerned of, just watch for uh, progression of block. So ayun yung mga medical questions na tinanong sa akin. So now we move on to the behavioral questions, guys. So yung behavioral questions, this, which is the part 2 of this vlog, hindi ko nasasabihin sa inyo guys yung mga sagot ko kasi very personal yung mga sagot ko. And for patients' privacy na rin kasi guys, uh, yun, basta yun na yun. Anyway, so, sasabihin ko na sa inyo yung mga tanong dito and then I, try, I will try my best para i-explain yung tanong para mas malinaw sa inyo yung tanong. Anyway, so ito yung mga tanong. Tell us about a time where you collaborated with other team members of the healthcare team. So, very straightforward. Ano daw yung magbigay ka ng specific example. Guys, ito nga pala, no? do not give a generalized example. Make sure kapag nag, nadudong ka na and then magbibigay na interview, ano na kapag behavioral questions, they will ask you, give me a specific example. So, make sure you give a specific example you collaborated or you work with a healthcare team member, a respiratory therapist, be a healthcare aide, a physician, a social worker, para ma-attain mo or ma-address mo yung patient's goal. Ayun yung tanong yun. Ayun yung tanong na yun. Gets? Or, and then yung pangalawang question is, parang ganun din, pero you collaborated with the patient's family to address a patient's goal. And then another question is, um, tell us about a time you dealt with difficult family members and how did you address it? So, ayun, very, very straightforward on your own experience. At least, ito, pag sinabi ko ito, meron kayong time para mag-isip, mag mag-research kung ano yung pwede nyo isagot sa mga questions na ito. Pero guys, disclaimer na tulad sinabi ko kanina, maaring hindi ito yung tanong na ibigay sa inyo kapag na-interview -inter na kayo. And then, the last question na pwede kong i-share sa inyo about behavioral is, tell us about the time you use your education to address a patient's issue and goal. So, ayan no guys. So, that's how I'm going to end my vlog. So, hopefully guys, may natutunan kayo dito sa ating... Uh, interview questions vlog, ating sit down video vlog, and do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and then follow me on Facebook. Again, ang link po is nasa baba, and then magta-try ulit ako mag-post ng ating uh, another poll sa ating community tab ng another, yeah, another poll nga tulad na sabi ko para meron tayong next sit down video next, next week. Yeah, pero meron tayong sit down video next week. Yeah. Anyway, goodbye for now.